It wasn't too long ago that Charles Barkley said, quote, Clay's still a very good player, but he's never going to be that guy again for three reasons, age, Achilles, and ACL, end quote. Thompson's career second highest 54 points against Atlanta to go along with his 25 point per game averages over his last 12 outings scarily display that the second half of the Splash Brothers is far from past his prime. In addition to Clay's 10 three pointer masterclass, Jordan, Dante, and Draymond nailed clutch three pointers down the stretch, Anthony Lamb's all out hustle off the pine, and Kevon Looney's dramatic game winning buzzer beater also came in handy. Even when things looked bleak, Golden State just proved the 20 2023 version of their core is relentless. Golden State's now won five straight, four games in which have come against playoff teams, all minus the two players who typically carry the largest chunk of the offensive load in Steph and Andrew. That said, before this, the reigning champs were blown out by New York and Brooklyn by 30 plus, and Jordan Poole still getting accustomed to his role as the primary playmaker. That said, considering the dubs are taking W's through this adjustment phase for Jordan, despite their trash record on the road, Golden State could be setting themselves up to be one of the scariest lower seeds of all time. With still over half the season left, a lot could change, of course, as the number one seed is still just four and a half games within striking distance. How'd Clay just set the Hawks on fire from Splash Mountain? Should we be concerned about Jordan Poole? And how'd Big Loon Dog unpredictably come up massive? You're going to want to stay tuned to find out. Before, however, just 13.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already and leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Despite Chuck claiming Clay's washed up and having an infamous back and forth with Thompson, that man Barkley now looking silly after what the four-time ring leader in Clay just did on Monday. Tape's coming up, despite the praise I'm about to give him, I just wanted to say that Clay has to keep using what Chuck said as motivation, because as silly as the comments look now, a rough second half of the year from Thompson could flip this narrative on its heels. That said, Clay just proved he's still an all-NBA caliber player post-consecutive major leg surgeries by willing the doves over the top in a double overtime thriller. Look at Clay, man, so inspirational. Thompson just posted 54 points in 46 minutes on 20 for 39 shooting from the field and 10 for 21 shooting from distance, also compiling eight boards, three dimes, and a block, while being a game best plus 13. With a deep range stroke that could be considered the nicest jump shooting release in the history of basketball, we're talking about someone who once received 52 touches in a game, dribbled the ball only 11 times, yet scored 60 points in that showing. That came in 2017, but his 54 piece on Monday came close to, if not match, that level of entertainment. Punch split curl action sees Dante set this back screen which morphs into an on ball when Draymond finds Clay as the weak side facilitator. Good pressure from DeAndre Hunter over the screen. Better read by the C captain who fluidly catches and aggressively drives in one motion, ultimately stopping short to float it home over the slow to recover DeAndre. You have to love how everyone fills out the lane for Golden State in transition right here. And the ball movement following Clay's bounce pass entry to Draymond shows you the improved chemistry with this group. Empty side split action sees another off-ball misdirection play take place between Dante and Clay, as this time, DiVincenzo sets the flare screen, and with Hunter right behind him after going over, watch this dead-eye concentration to go to another world and knock it down amidst heavy traffic. You saw this savvy off-ball motion without the rock and spot-up shooting, but you can't dismiss Clay's shooting off the dribble. He's making right under 38% of pull-up three-point shots this season, a really solid clip. After bringing it up, Draymond glues Hunter to him with a big body screen. Clay's gonna hezzy dribble and watch the eye contact and body language from him to fake the drive as John switches onto him. And after he just hesitated a second ago, this fake hezzy gets Collins leaning back and give Clay all the space he needs and more to transition into the pull up. That was Clay's underrated shot creation off the bounce. Next, I'm showing you his underrated playmaking to deeply maneuver into the heart of the lane as he draws the gravity of three Hawk defenders and whips a bullet to the wide open Anthony Lamb. Sticking to that theme, here he gets the hockey assist after kicking it out following an isolation. Another bomb from Lamb Chops. Clay seems to like him some Lamb Chops as after another savvy bit of space creation into the heart of the Atlanta D. While transitioning from the drive to the post against Justin Holiday, he whips a semi no look underhand shuffle pass to Lamb for the easy hoop. Split action with Looney as the facilitator turns into a weak side handoff with Kavon to Clay as Thompson just sheds Holiday by gathering momentum into the catch, selling take to the bucket, all while using just two dribbles for the Dirk-esque fade on the baseline. Beautiful stuff.
Notice how nothing's laggy or nothing gets wasted in Steve Kerr's offense, everything's swiftly flowing and unpredictable. First stagger screen of the night that Thompson comes off completely fools Trey Young, who just leaves Thompson alone after he comes off the first pick from DiVincenzo. After this typically freaky off-handed outlet pass through traffic from Draymond, Clay collects it swiftly, up fakes, jabs, drives, getting Murray thinking he's going all the way to the hoop before he stops on a dime and rises up for the two dribble pull up. Delay Chicago type action, sees Thompson set the back screen as a decoy, getting Young focused on DiVincenzo, Collins is in no man's land, and Lamb pins down Hunter, getting Clay the open look. Simple weak side pin down shows off both more miscommunication from Atlanta and DiVincenzo's elite screening ability for a guard, and watch the zoned in L shaped video game esque trigger from Clay and how on balance he lands. You rarely see that on balance of a landing from players, as his jumper is just so damn fundamental. Bad possession for the first 12 seconds of it right here, Lamb fakes the pass to the cutting Dante before outletting it back to the streaking off-ball Clay, who demands the rock, effectively cuts to the strong side corner before fading away in Hunter's grill. How about another beautiful two-dribble pull-up where this time he pump fakes, sweeps through while watching Murray fly by, before staying on balance for the bucket. Always accustomed to hitting dramatic trailer threes, here he does just that off the dime from Dante to make it a four-point game, with just over five minutes left. Defensively, watch the clamps from Clay to stick with Murray right here and actively get a hand in there to poke it away. Down four with under 40, however, Golden State goes back to their patented weak side pin down action with Draymond as the screener. No reason why the Hawks should be sagging this far back at this point, but Clay makes him pay. Hawks are up one with under 20 seconds left in the first OT. Clay gets Holiday out on an island, spams in and out Hezzy dribble three times, freezing Justin before he steps back for a shot that resembles the best version we've ever seen of this man. We'll get to the dramatics from Looney, but in terms of why we shouldn't be overly concerned about Jordan Poole's hefty turnover numbers as of late, at least in the long run we shouldn't be concerned, comes down to a quote recently made by Steve Kerr, who was asked about JP's TOs and said, these games are great for Jordan to feel what it's like to be Steph, end quote. Go watch my last Warrior video from a few days ago to see my thoughts on JP adjusting to being the number one option. But I wanted to give some props to Anthony Lamb for his ruthless strip of John Collins, that helped shift the momentum in overtime. Lamb also dropped a critical 17 points, which came on 7 for 12 shooting from the fields and 2 for 6 shooting from distance. If the dubs are going to turn around their fortunes for good, they'll need more performances like that from their role players. Moving on to the old school low post 5 man in Looney, who was rotating in and out of this game down the stretch, replacing or being replaced with new school floor spacing 5 man Anthony Lamb. Looney had to stay focused even while being on and off the floor during the dying minutes, despite dealing with Kerr's unpredictable yet necessary substitutions and finishing the game as a minus 20. Kevon stayed ready and didn't hesitate with the game knotted under pressure, as after grabbing his own board with his 99 overall rated hands, he puts back this dagger to leave Trey Young and all of the ATL in their feelings. Are you concerned about Jordan Poole's turnovers? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shoutout goes to Irvin Guerra, who says one of the most underrated aspects to Donovan Mitchell's game nowadays is his decision making, which has been a crucial part of his outstanding play. How he sees the defense guarding him and being able to know when to drive, iso for a 3 or pass is a thing of beauty to watch. Well put by Irvin, appreciate every take, thanks for watching, have a good one.